There was a time when gods walked the earth, when warriors were heroes. Their battles and conquests became legend, and the legend lives on. This is the hour of the gladiators. Four athletes tonight have battled their way through the heats, through the quarters, and tonight they front up for the first of the semi-finals. And to make their challenge even harder, here's Blade and Tower. Glacier, Predator, and Tornado. Storm, Taipan, and Flame. Vulcan, Commando, and Fury. Hammer, Delta and the Big Eagle, Condor. The competition heats up and the excitement can only get more intense. So let's hand things over to Kimberly Joseph and Mike Hammond. Hello. Hi and welcome to Gladiators. It's our semi-finals tonight. Yes, all our challengers have battled through two rounds already, but they still have one final test before they reach the grand final. Absolutely, there's been plenty of bruises to get this far, and tonight we've kind of got a war of the ages. Two of our challengers are around the 30 mark, and another two are in their early 20s. Aha, uh -huh. so it sounds to me like maturity versus youthful vigour. It's That's a bit right. like you and me, Mark. I didn't know you were around the 30 mark. <laughs> Very funny. Yeah, I don't think I'll buy into that one right now. Let's meet our female challengers tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Please put your hands together for Sandra Hansen and Catherine Arlo. Sandra from Canberra is a physical trainer in the Navy, and she's also a South Coast Triathlon champion. And in her quarterfinals, Sandra put up a great fight, evading Delta for 60 seconds and five points. She almost made the platform. Catherine from Victoria is a physiotherapist and a USA Open champion in judo. And Catherine showed great determination in her quarterfinal. She took a mighty hit and hung on by her fingernails, going on to run for eight points. Sandra and Catherine. Welcome back, Sandra, and welcome to the semi finals. Did you ever think you'd get this far? No, Kimberly, I didn't. I've um, come from behind in both eliminators, and I'm very surprised to be here. Now, you actually haven't played any of the games up tonight. Are you a bit nervous about them? Uh, yes, I am, um, especially the gauntlet. That's um, supposed to be pretty heavy contact, but I'm here to have a lot of fun as well. Well, good luck to you facing those five gladiators. Now, I understand your husband, Keith, has been backstage with you. Yes, he has. He's um, been sort of pepping me up a little bit, and he's here in the audience tonight, so I'm just glad he's here with me. Well, I'm sure you've got his full support. Good luck to you, Sandra. Thanks, Kimberly. Catherine. You've taken to being fairly sensational on this show. Last time we saw you here on The Eliminator, uh, we all got very concerned at the end because you had a, an asthma attack. That's right, yeah. Um, actually, it happened at the start. Um, I was chalking up and um, unfortunately it inhaled a bit of chalk and um, I was running through The Eliminator and not being able to breathe, but um, I just managed to get there in the end. I guess, uh, though, a lot of people are surprised that being an asthmatic, you're able to push yourself that hard. Well, Mike, actually, there's been a lot of athletes that have had asthma and have reached world status. So. Um, it's through a lot of training and a lot of control that we managed to deal with this. It's, it's a condition, not a disability. So, I mean, it's, it doesn't mean that you can't still participate and be good at what you do. Great role model then for kids who have asthma. Don't sit around the house, get out and be healthy. No, just give it a go and see what happens. Now, also, too, as I said, you've caused us quite a bit of concern. At, at last episode of Skytrack, we had to rerun it because you smashed into fury and we had to rerun you against Delta. Well, unfortunately, um, Fury was in the middle of the track. I mean, we, it's all our first time on the actual um, course. So Fury, I think, was a bit... Um, she, she lost her bearings a little bit, and it was just an unfortunate accident. But uh, fortunately, I, was, I managed to win the next uh, rerun. Well, you got the 10 points, and of course, Skytrack is up there from the ceiling tonight. We're uh, set to play that again, and the wall is on. Now, last time you were up on the wall, you lost your footing on the first uh, toe grip. Have you got that worked out now? Well, I hope I have. I've uh, had a little bit of a practice this morning, so we'll see what happens. Catherine, good luck tonight. Thanks a lot. Please welcome our female challengers, Catherine and Sandra. And now let's meet our male challengers, Shane Valetic and Paul Stubbs. Shane is an engineer's assistant from WA. 
He played rugby with the Belmont Steelers and he has a one-year-old daughter named Tess. And Shane came up against Taipan in his quarterfinal and they jousted for the full minute, neither giving an inch and Shane really earned five points. Paul is a Queensland bricklayer and Australian surf club representative an Aussie rules player, and he's also a dad of two kids. And Paul left Taipan hanging around in his quarterfinal. It was tough, but Paul made the platform and got 10. Ladies and gentlemen, Shane and Paul. Shane. Now, swing shot, last time we saw you on in the quarterfinals. It's one of the best rounds of that game I think I've seen. You got three red balls. They're, of course, the highest and the hardest ones to get. And one of them you carried back in your teeth. Yeah, well, he was blocking pretty fierce, so I had to get it out of his range and try and stop his blocking, and he actually scratched my eye while he was trying to get me in. I guess so that's an insight into you as a challenger, just about uh, sort of that terrier attitude. It's like, uh, never say die. Yeah, well, it's tougher than what it looks on TV, so you've got to have it. Now, we're playing Gauntlet tonight. Now, you haven't played Gauntlet, but uh, how are you feeling about that? That's a pretty tough game, and as a rugby league player, I guess you'd be used to that sort of sport. Yeah, well, as it happens, Hammer's a rugby league player too, and he's right up the front, so get past him it's got to get a little bit easier not much but that's about it good luck tonight shane let's wish him all the best paul well, welcome back to the show now this is aussie rules versus league a couple of very competitive gentlemen yeah they're pretty competitive sports but uh it shouldn't change anything tonight okay so you're all hyped up for this evening the semi-final yes very nervous <laughs> now last time we saw you on uh, sky track you managed to gain 10 points well done yeah I Lucky then, hope they can do the same tonight. Now, uh, you had a fantastic eliminator time. Is it going to be uh, a, a record-breaking eliminator for you tonight? Well, first, I'll be just trying to win. If the time comes, well, that'll be a bonus. Fantastic. Well, good luck to you tonight. And I understand you'd like to say hello to a few very special people in the audience. Hello to my wife, Linda, and my two boys, Aaron and Jay. Well, I'm sure they'll be cheering you on tonight. Thank you very much, Paul, and good luck to you. Ladies and gentlemen, Shane and Paul. Well, we've met all our challenges. You can understand the nerves are really there tonight with our semi-finals. One more person we still have to meet. That's our referee. Let's hear it for Mike Whitney. Hi, Mike. How you going, mate? Hi, Kimba. How are you doing? Welcome to our semi-final. That's fantastic to be here. A battle of the ages, as uh, we were pointing out earlier. Some people up around the 30 mark, others around the, uh, the early 20 mark. Well, I don't think age is, is as significant as what it used to be. I mean, you see, particularly here on Gladiators, ordinary people now are a lot fitter and they're holding that fitness a lot longer. And even pro professional sports women and men are staying at the top of their sports for much longer at that sort of age. And realistically, when they're hitting their 30s, they're just starting to hit their straps. Yep. Well, I think the clock is ticking away for us here tonight at Gladiators. So let the games begin. OK, it's that first tap on the ankles that tells you you weren't quite quick enough. Sixty seconds to get to the top, ten points if you make it, nothing if you're caught. Right now at the bottom, hoping to make it up here is our red challenger Sandra, being chased by Blade. And in the blue, it's Catherine, being chased by Storm. Let's hand control now to our referee, Mike Whitney. Challengers! You will go on my whistle! You expect athletes to hit the wall at the end of a long run. Whistle. Well, our challengers are hitting hey, this wall Catherine. right at the start hey. of their run. And Catherine has scaled the wall before, but Storm caught her when she fumbled at the start. And Catherine really can't afford to slip tonight because Storm is hard on her heels right now. Blade's doing well up against Sandra. Both challengers are going to get caught early by the looks of things. Well, Blade's got Sandra. Now she's just going to try and get her off. And she does. Storm working over there with Catherine. She's got a handful of Catherine's harness. And the physiotherapist from Melbourne is putting up a fantastic fight. She's supporting about 120 kilos up there by eight fingertips. And what a shock for Storm. Why well, call this woman Catherine the Great? She is a real warrior. Storm's going through contortions up there and Catherine is battened down. Riding out the Storm. Catherine setting new endurance standards up here on the wall. She's got five seconds to survive. Will she do it? Storm's trying hard and she got her. Bad luck, Catherine. Both women were caught early and Blade had little trouble taking Sandra down. 
Storm almost lost it, trying to loosen Catherine's grip and just got her off. Catherine, I thought you'd do it there, but that grip must have been just excruciating. Oh, well, not really in judo. All we do all day is grip, so I wasn't really, I slipped and um, I just lost balance. What I had to do was actually get my feet underneath and just push so she couldn't get any leverage, but to her credit, she kept fighting and fighting. I got a few in the head, <laughs> but it was great. It was a great fight. I don't think I've ever seen Storm fight so much. My goodness, you've really worked up a sweat there. What a grip, what a climb. I saw. She didn't get very far, but certainly it was, a, it was certainly a battle for me and I was thinking, When's that whistle gonna go? What a game and what an effort from Catherine, but no score to either woman tonight. Well, what an exciting start to the show. Now, let's see if the guys are in form. Please welcome Shane. Being pursued by Condor. And Paul will be trying to make it up the wall before he gets caught by Hammer. Over to you, Mike Whitney. Challengers! You will go on my whistle. 60 seconds on the wall must have seemed like hours for Catherine. Now the men are trying to escape the same fate if they make it over the top. And Shane's not wasting a second, and Paul's going for broke over there on the right. Seven seconds ticking down, and here come the gladiators. And Paul certainly has covered a lot of ground. He's up to the second overhang and just about over it. Paul's wife, Linda, urging him to hit the top. That's what he's trying to do, and that's what he has done. There's 10 points to Paul. Shane has Condor snapping at his heels. He's spoiling his foothold. Condor now swooping. Will he get Shane off? He does, no points. Great pace in the last part of Paul's climb. This man is so strong. Eight years older than his rival, and the Queensland bricklayer showed him how it was done. And Condor took the slower Shane out of here. Stubbsy. 10 points, mate. How are you feeling? I saw you jumping around. Must be happy. Yeah, really happy. Great start to the game. Yeah, real good. Did you feel Hammer sort of right on your heels at one stage there? I feel him the whole time. <laughs> He's a big man. Hammer, how is it, the wall? I mean, normally it's like a smaller a bit. You're carrying 100 kilos up that wall. It's pretty difficult. Yeah, it's 100 kilos, but I mean, it's uh, weight to, to strength ratio. And uh, I mean, I don't think anyone would have caught this man today. He was up like a rat in a drain pipe. And good luck for the rest of the show. Shane, I'm disappointed. I thought you would have made it up there on pure adrenaline. Yeah, well, it's something that I'm not used to. And oh, the big fella's so quick up there. Not much you can do about it. You were a bit scared about the wall, weren't you? Yeah, well, it's something I haven't had earlier on, so not much practice, but ends of breaks. Well, with a condor chasing you, I can understand why. Condor, he was so far ahead, and you were just so, so quick. Yes, he's very quick, Kimberly. Lately, I've had a mental block on the wall, but today I won up there because I won in here. Paul takes the mountain and the 10 points, and a good lead over Shane this early. After one game where the challengers were trying to get away from the gladiators, here's one where they have to run right into them. That's why we call it the gauntlet, and it's coming up next.
Sandra. And hi, I'm Kat. We made it here to the semis tonight through our ability and determination. The Eliminator will decide who's got what it takes to go all the way. None of tonight's challenges have been down this road before and they're about to discover that any points they get will be the hardest they've ever earned. To score the maximum 10 points, the challenger must get all the way in less than 20 seconds. And of course, trying to pass these five gladiators. Sandra is first up to run the gauntlet. Up against our gladiators, Delta, Storm, Glacier, Fury and Flame. Over to you, Mike Whitney. Challenger, are you ready? Gladiators, are you ready? Sandra is a stranger to the gauntlet. Well, not for long, because it's time to meet the gladiators. And Delta's no stickler for formality, bouncing Sandra around the gauntlet. Sandra gets past Delta, and now Storm embraces the challenger and slows things right down. Sandra literally falling through to the next station. Sandra's not having much control in any part of the run so far. Glacier closes in and Sandra's still going down. She's absolutely going nowhere. Like a cork trying to bob upstream, Sandra's tried her hardest, but the whistle ends her journey. Sandra, I tell you what, they kept bumping and you just kept coming back for more. Yeah, Glacier's just so hard. I never expected it to be that hard. She just kept pushing me down and down. I just couldn't get up. I guess that's the name of the game, though. That's why we call it running the gauntlet. Of course, you've got to run past the five gladiators along the way. No points on the board for you there, unfortunately. But a good, hard match. Well done. Yeah, I'm just glad it's over. <laughs> Let's have a big round of applause for Sandra. Well, Sandra just didn't have enough pace in the gauntlet. But now it's Catherine's turn to have a run. Let's see if she can turn up the heat. Hey! Catherine powers into and straight past Delta. That's the way to do it. She shoves Storm out the way and goes on her whirlwind run past Glacier. Fury's over. Catherine's up to flame. Last line of the fence. That is raw power. That is 10 points. This was power play from Catherine. And all you would-be challengers, watch this run. Speed, strength, smarts and sheer willpower from Catherine the Great. I think you, you thought you had to run it again there, did you? I'd say. <laughs> You'd love to. So your judo tactics uh, came in very handy just then? Yes, they came in. They came into play really, really well. But I'll tell you what, the girls in the middle here, they're really tough and it was very, very difficult to get through. But Catherine, you made it look oh so easy and those 10 points give you a lead halfway through this semi-final. A very tough lineup, guys, but after what I just saw, I reckon Catherine would give you all a run for your money. Well, after that run, I think Catherine could show our male challengers a few tips on this game. Let's welcome the first of them right now. It's Shane against the might of Hammer, Commando, Condor, Tornado, and Vulcan. Here's Mike Whitney. Challenger! Are you ready? Shane, the rugby Ready league on, man, has a few ready? very hard yards ahead of him right Three, here. Two, one. Shane head down, charges straight into Hammer, who tries to slow the man in red, but Shane's moving strong and fast. Commando trying to hold him, but he can't either. Condor dives, he misses. Now he's up to Tornado. Tornado tangling with Shane. Shane's coming unstuck. Literally, but Shane's getting out of a sticky situation and into the arms of Vulcan. Vulcan using his mass against Shane, who's trying to barge his way through. Time's running out. I don't reckon he'll make it. He doesn't. Bad luck. And Vulcan's proud of that piece of work. I thought Shane had the right strategy, but Vulcan just stonewalled him. Well, do you think you would have done better if you'd had a rugby league ball under your arm? There's nothing you can train for to do there. How's the head? Because you just kept it down the whole time and I think Vulcan pinned it there. I was trying to get under and throw him off, but big fella's too heavy, you can't do it. Yeah, you can't mess with the might of our gladiators, can you? No, that's true. Now, Paul has already conquered one wall tonight. This is a horizontal one, but this guy is so strong. Let's go to Mike Whitney. Three, two, one. 
Paul takes off and Hammer traps him from the start. That's bad for Paul. He throws Hammer aside and now carries on to Commando. He's out of his zone, but he's lost his helmet. Head down and straight through Commando. Paul worked his helmet loose with this mighty effort. The game was stopped for safety reasons. The challenger lost his helmet. There is 18 seconds left on the clock. We will start the countdown. Three, two, one. Is there an advantage starting again? We'll find out as Paul goes through Condor. No, he doesn't. Condor backed up. Now he's over the top and up to Tornado. Let's see what he can do to Tornado. He blows him away. There's only one bloke left. It's Vulcan. Paul's 81 kilos up against Vulcan's 1,145. And Vulcan stopped him. Stubbsy, what is it like not only having to stand on that starting line once and looking into the eyes of a gladiator, but doing it twice after the game gets stopped? Very scary. Hey, big blokes. No points for either challenger through the gauntlet. Great runs, but in the end, Paul still leads by 10 after two games. There will be more big hits later in Suspension Bridge, but now we'll go up into the roof to play Sky Track. That's up next. I'm Shane. The quarterfinals were quite a test. We were a match for them. And now we're ready for the semis. There can only be one winner. You're upside down, 10 metres in the air. You don't have time to get dizzy because you've got a race to run. The challenger must complete a full circuit and not get tagged by the gladiator to earn the 10 points. Harnessed in and set to run. Let's welcome Sandro. And Catherine. And now Gladiators Fury and Delta. All right, let's go to our referee, Mike Whitney. Thanks, Mike. Last time Catherine tracked through the sky, Are she collided ready? with Fury, who stalled halfway along the rails. Catherine, in a rerun, Three, outran two, Delta. One. Delta's after Catherine again, and Catherine gets off to a great start. Fury closing in fast on Sandra, and that explosion says Sandra's been stopped in her tracks. Delta relentlessly closing in on Catherine, who's slowing on the curves. Delta's so close, you can see Delta reaching for the button, and she's just missing. Delta's almost got her. Catherine crosses the line. 
Whoa, that's close. Sandra was caught early in the race, so she's out of here. But this is controversial. Delta really seemed to hit the button once, twice, and she really hit it hard there. Sandra hanging upside down. Are you scared of heights at all? Oh, a little bit. I think everyone has a little bit of a fear of heights, but it's a very different feeling. And halfway around, you think you're actually running the right way up. It's a very weird feeling. Absolutely. Well, we've got no points for you there because you were snatched by Fury. Fury, uh, last time you were up there, we had a bad accident. Yeah, I was actually a little nervous about going up today, so um, well, luckily it didn't affect my performance. Bad luck, and good luck for the next couple of games. Come over here, we'll have a chat with Catherine and Delta. Now, guys, this is, a, this is becoming a bit of a rematch here. We had, a, we had it last time where there was an accident, and so that we had a rematch, and Delta, Catherine got the 10 points. This time round, I'm here to tell you that Delta you were successful. No points for Catherine because you actually nailed it three times. We had a misfire on the charge is the official uh, ruling from our referees. I think we're even now, but I wish Catherine um, the best in at the Eliminator. I hope she gets through. Catherine, uh, obviously, this was going to be a big rematch this time round. Delta wasn't going to let you get away. And 10 points to Delta for catching you. Did you have any idea, though, that the charge wasn't firing? Could you, could you feel that the, uh, the drag as the button was hit? No, I couldn't feel anything, but um, I must admit I felt I was going very slow. I lost it on all the corners today. I didn't have the right setting and I didn't have my mind on, on the job. So it was, I was very, um, it was very unexpected that my thing didn't go off. So I, I kind of like thought that I'd lost anyway. Well, a malfunction on Skytrack saw both women get no points. Three games down and Catherine still leads by 10. Shane's first time up on Skytrack, however, Paul is a former winner. So let's welcome them back, Shane. And Paul. Trying to keep away from our gladiators, Tornado. And Commando. Mike Whitney, let's start the Skytrack. Yeah, that's right. Paul powered away from Predator last time. This time, Commando is well, tracking him down. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Commando's so quick off the mark. He's absolutely flying, and I reckon he might have just about got the button. Well, he's actually overrun it. He comes back and pushes at that time. Shane, the man in red, is doing well. Sprinting away, but the detonator's gone off. Tornado was nowhere near that, and lucky Shane didn't stop because he crosses for 10. Well, Paul was caught by Commando, and he could see the Gladiator hit the button. But Shane was clearly ahead of Tornado. The detonator went off. What a night. Well, Shane, I've got good news for you, because your detonator actually went off, but Tornado wasn't the one to push it. It just uh, it was a freak occurrence. So, 10 points to you. Well done. Yeah, I felt the heat go off, and I thought I was lost it straight away, but I looked back, and I couldn't see anybody there, so I didn't know what happened. I just kept going. Now, just coming over here. Well, let me tell you, Paul made it through last time. He gained himself 10 points, but you were right on top of it today, Commando. Yeah, Kimberly, I've got a bit of advice for him when he does his next round. If he gets to do Skytrack again, there's one thing he ought to remember on Skytrack. <laughs> when he's up against the fastest unbeaten Skytrack champion, go faster, boy. Go faster. Well, I'm sure Paul is giving it all he's got, but he's got nothing on Skytrack. And Shane's 10 now levels the score after three. Well, Mike Whitney, we spoke earlier about age differences. Now, does experience and maturity play a big part in this? Well, they can, Kimbo. It's, it's a bit like the old tortoise in the hair. Now, we've got one of our challengers who's been well off the pace in both her heats and seen her opponents race away from her, but she's been the one who's got through the paper burst first. Exactly. So sometimes it's the old steady as she goes <laughs> gets you home first. Well, there is nothing steady about this next game. It's called Suspension Bridge, and it's up next.
winners of the semi-final will receive a fabulous five-night holiday for two at the luxurious Shangri-La Bali Dynasty Resort. Enjoy old-world tradition and first-class luxury in the one tranquil setting. A five-star lifestyle set in an Asian garden paradise. The Shangri-La Bali Dynasty Resort. Runners-up receive a Sanyo 68cm stereo colour TV, a three-disc mini hi-fi system, a four-head sports review hi-fi VCR, and a cordless telephone with answering machine, all valued at $4,200. Sanyo, that's life. Well, the aim of the game isn't actually to knock your opponent off, but to get to the other side. However, the gladiators aren't about to wave you through. Suspension Bridge. Ten points if you make it across the bridge without being dispatched by the gladiator. Our first female challenger has never played this game before. Let's welcome Sandra. <laughs> Up against our gladiator, Flame. And to start suspension bridge, here's Mike Whitney. Challenger! Are you ready? As Kimberly said, Sandra ready? hasn't played suspension bridge before, ready? but we all know Flame Three, has. Two, one. Sandra running straight in, Flame's also straight in. She disorientates Sandra with a quick swipe from the left. She's off, no points. Well, you need the replay to appreciate Flame's method of dispatching Sandra. Flame leaning forward, putting all her weight into the blows. Sandra's on one foot, now she's on two, but on the mats. Sandra? Short and sweet, but I don't think there's anything too sweet about it for you. No, I think it was psychological after last time I met Flame. And um, I think I was just a bit too worried about it. That's probably why I couldn't get myself together. So what, you were standing there on the platform before the whistle went thinking, I don't want to do this. <laughs> exactly right. I really, I really wasn't ready to go up against Flame again, but um, no credit for me. She's fantastic. Absolutely. Well done. Well, let's have a big round of applause for Sandra. No points there, I'm afraid. Sandra Flame. Your reputation precedes you. Mike, do you think there'll ever be a challenger that's lucky enough to make it across my bridge? Well, there's a challenge for you. Any potential challengers out there that want to come and take Flame on, on the suspension bridge, get in touch with us here at Gladiators. Let's have a big round of applause for Flame. And now in this semi-final round, let's welcome to suspension bridge for the very first time, Catherine. And her opponent, Glacia, is Mike Whitney. Hey! Catherine's a very hey! strong woman, as we saw in Gauntlet and on the wall. And I reckon Glacia will have her hands full tonight. Helmet camera showing us that there's some big hits being thrown by Glacia. The judo expert fighting back for Glacia. Some big blows as she sweeps. And Catherine has done it again. Catherine, what an unbelievable game. It's not very often that somebody gets a gladiator off the suspension bridge. However, before we start, I want to have a chat to Mike Whitney. OK, we've had to have a look at the replay because John Forsythe and I thought that Catherine may have actually pushed Glacier off the bridge, which is against the rules of suspension bridge. Right. She didn't do that. She actually was half jabbed her off, and I think Glacier slipped as well. OK. But you must have your hammerhead with you when you get to the other side of the bridge. And Catherine didn't do that. So does that mean five, five points? Five points. Well, not such a bad effort anyway. Five points, Catherine. You proud of yourself? Um, yeah. Uh, I think the judo techniques are always coming in handy in these games somehow. Yeah, well, Glacier put in um, a few big hits and I managed to give it, get a bit of a jab to the body. And I think I was just being a little bit too cocky and tried to be a, you know, a gladiator and throw my stick down. and. And um, unfortunately, I came unstuck, so um, I'll try not to do that again. Well, in all the excitement, you didn't manage to complete it with your hammerhead. Glacier, how was that fall? It all happened so quickly up there. It sure did, but to her credit, one, two, and I was off. Well, Catherine was too excited with beating Glacier. She forgot the stick and only picked up five, but that gives her a seven and a half second lead in the Eliminator. It's time for the first of our male challenges now. Let's welcome Paul. He's up against Hammer. Let's start the game. Here's Mike Whitney. Challenger, are you ready? Paul fought Predator ready last ready? time on the bridge and lost. Ready? Will the Aussie rules hey. man get a goal hey. this time round? 
Well, a slow start. Hammer certainly showing the Queensland bricklayer a lot of respect. Hammer sending Paul backwards and nearly off the bridge. Paul trying to fight back, but look at this. Some big hits there from Hammer, and Paul's still there, but Hammer's hammer hit isn't. Paul's won it. And Linda, Aaron and Jay are loving every minute of this. Well, let's watch how it happened. Hammer and Paul putting everything into each blow. Hammer loses his grip. Paul's the winner. Paul, just before we start, Mike Whitney, there was a bit of confusion there. Well, I don't know why these challengers want to keep throwing <laughs> their hammerhead away. But in this case, it didn't matter. Hammer lost his hammerhead. Okay. So he's ruled out of the game. Ten points to the challenger. Ten points. Paul, that's just what you wanted to hear, isn't it? Yeah, pretty lucky, I think. I think so, because you're going into the Eliminator next. Now, uh, Shane's on ten at the moment. However, he hasn't played suspension bridge yet. Are you confident now about the Eliminator? No, nah, Shane's probably the most fiercest com competitor here, so you need all the start you can get against him. However, you've got a pretty good time, so uh, fingers crossed. I'm, I'm hoping so. Good one. Hammer, if ever there was a game made for you, you've got your hammer head there, but uh, you threw it down this time. Usually the games works better when you've got the hammer in your hand, but, I mean, you can't take anything away from Paul. I mean, he's been a competitive through the whole series, and, uh, I mean, the ten points will certainly keep me in good stead for the Eliminator. Our next male challenger on suspension bridge is Shane. Up against the almighty Vulcan. Shane has a lot to try for. He needs to get the maximum score hey, here, but hey, Vulcan has a devastatingly hey. good record on the bridge. Vulcan oh so cocky, he just strolls in to beat Shane. Shane defends him first up, and Vulcan swipes him sideways. Shane staggers, scrambles back somehow, and I don't know how. He's got a cross, he's got ten. Oh, you beauty. Well, the crowd loved it. Shane loved it, but what does Mike Whitney think? Mike, we've had a long uh, look at, at the instant replay. The rules of this game say you are not allowed to push anybody off the suspension bridge. Shane was trying to get past Vulcan and on the way through, shouldered him off the suspension bridge. Disqualified, no points. Shane, you desperately needed those 10 points to catch up with Stubbsy. There's a 10-point difference between you now. Makes it real tough, but uh, it's good to see the big fella go down. Ha! Off goes Shane, with a bit of attitude. Vulcan, not very often we see you flying through the air. You know, Hammond, never ever get beaten on the bridge. Only thing that little weed have to do is push me. Hey, I will never get beaten. You can push me, but you can never beat me, all right? Well, Vulcan reckons he can't be beat. Shane, unfortunately, missed out on his 10, but Paul's 10 now gives him a five-second lead going into the Eliminator. They've all done this thing twice before, so our challengers now know what to expect. Except we've cranked up the Travelator to semi-final speed. That's up next in the Eliminator.
how grand final winners will each receive the new Hyundai Lantra GLS. Designed to perform, the Lantra has the explosive power of a 1.8 litre engine, the safety of ABS brakes, plus the comfort of power windows, central locking and power steering. The Lantra GLS is valued at over $26,000. Wouldn't you rather have a Lantra? Runners up in the series final will win a five day holiday for two at the Shangri-La Fijian Resort. For the time of your life in the water and on the beaches, the place to be is Fiji. There's only two places in our final, but we've got four challengers who want to get there. The eliminator. This eliminator decides who goes into the final and who goes home from here. Well, I've called Sandra the triumphant tortoise before and twice she's come from behind and taken the honours when her opponents have faltered on the Travelator. Catherine inhaled some chalk dust and had an asthma attack last time round, but she still came home in 1.16. OK, the female event is just about to take place. Sandra, did you ever think you'd make it here to the semi-finals? No, Mike, I never even thought I'd make it through the trials. <laughs> um, but I've proved to myself, I think, that I've... Um, I've got more determination and guts than I thought I had. OK, well, here you are in the semi-finals. This is going to be your third run through here on the Eliminator. It really is a killer. All the best. A big round of applause for Sandra. OK, Catherine, one thing I want to ask you firstly, have we got a Vandalin waiting for you at the finish line? I certainly hope so. OK, well, you know what this event is all about. We'll get, get you guys straight in there. Catherine, you've got a seven and a half second start because of the points difference. Good luck to you both. Let's go to our referee, Mike Whitney. Catherine, you will go on my whistle. Sandra, you will go on John's. Challengers, are you ready? Catherine may have a start hey. on her rival, hey. but she knows wow. that Sandra will do everything right. One slip and Sandra will take her. Catherine capitalising on her advantage. She's straight over the hurdles and heading off towards the rope climb. Here comes Sandra. Well, the rope proves pretty easy for Catherine. And now she's well into the hand ladder. On her way, Sandra's slow and steady as she comes up to the rope and moving well. Catherine showing no sign of being short of breath this time round as she storms across the rolling logs and goes up towards a cargo net. She's giving it all she's got. She sneaks a quick look round to see where Sandra is. There she is at the end of the hand ladder. Catherine's just about up top of the cargo net. Sandra still coming home strong. She's good on the net. Let's see if she can do well this time. Catherine turning around. She's onto the zip line. Down she goes. A quick ride on the zip. A good drop and a quick exit. She's off. Sandra's family willing her to hang in there. They've seen her come from behind twice before, but Catherine is moving off so well across the beam. Sandra hasn't crested the net just yet. And now, Catherine starts for home. She powers up there. She's strong, she's good, and she's a finalist. Oh, I called her Catherine the Great before. I'm sticking to that. This challenge is not too bad either. Sandra's really putting in a big effort. Even though she's lost, she's still trying her hardest, just doing everything to get home. Here comes our Navy trainer, steady as she goes, across the beam without a stutter, and Sandra's husband, Keith, has been a challenger. He knows what she's going through right here, and so does everyone else. They've done the Eliminator with her. Sandra, you've done us proud, but Catherine's the winner. OK, Sandra, grab a breath. Catherine, fantastic. Vendelin, need it this time? No, good on you, good on you, good on you. A great time. Threw in one minute. What was the time there, Kerry? One minute 16. That's a good run. Oh, yeah, it was OK. I just uh, I decided that I'd take this run and just make myself, re-familiarise myself with the um, equipment so that I could make a good run for the um, finals. I saw you have a little sneaky look just as you hit the car going to turn around and see how far Sandra was. Sandra, come in here. All right, a bit of help there with that helmet. Come on over. Don't worry about that. We'll fix all that up. How are you feeling? Oh, pretty tired. It's the third time on that. You must be feeling like, uh, you know, that course off by heart by now. Yeah, I'm rather glad I'm not doing it again, though, actually. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, a great effort. Three to our semi-finals, one minute 50. It was a very hard run. I think a big round of applause for Sandra. Thanks for being such a great competitor and a great challenger. But, Catherine, the great news for you is semi-final speed on that Travelator, you got straight to the top. Um, the Travelator doesn't seem to bother me very much. Believe it or not, it's a cargo net, and it's at um, semi-final tension, which is really loose. I... I hesitate to think what it's going to be for the final, but we'll see how we go. You sure will, because you're there. All the best. Congratulations, Catherine. Catherine, I love through to our final in the female event. 
Shane has led in each eliminator so far, never putting a hand or foot wrong, and his personal best is 110. And Paul has great upper body strength and went through last time in a phenomenal 55 seconds. Well, Paul, tell me, at this stage of the challenge, what is really giving you all that energy at this point? The fear of losing. The fear of losing. The fear of losing to Shane? Especially. <laughs> he's a very fierce competitor, isn't he? You said that yourself. Yeah, he's the fiercest, and uh, he's let me know he's going to yell and growl at me all the way. So I'll be trying my hardest. Well, at least it's him and not the gladiators this time, hey? Yeah, that's a change. Now, you actually have a five-second head start. You've got a very fast time in the eliminator, but as you said, Shane's pretty competitive. Yeah, I don't think the head start means anything today. Okay, well, all the best to you. Shane, this is actually the first time you've come from behind. Yeah, that's right, Kimberly. It's going to be new to me, but uh, like I say, he'll hear me coming. So do you think that'll be an added incentive for you, hey? For sure. Okay, well, guys, Paul, you've got the five-second start, and it's over to you, Mike Whitney. Good luck. Paul, you will go on my whistle. What are these Shane, guys thinking? You will go on John's. They are both so Challenges, good. Are you they ready? can only hope Three, that the other stumbles. Two, and Paul one. must be so glad he's got that five second start. But as we said, one slip, bang, it's gone. Paul, perfect start for him through the hurdles with ease. Shane's got a target to chase. This could be the psychological advantage. And look at Paul go. He's winding that handbike up like it was a wristwatch. Off he goes, rolling logs and cargo net. Shane's no slouch either. He's powering through this. He's up to the cargo net also. They're still around about three or four seconds in this. Paul turns around. Onto the zip line he goes. Coming down, a good drop on it here for Paul. Yep, there it is. He needs to pick up time if he wants to keep this lead. His family's getting behind him. What about Shane Paul? Nearly slipped on the balance beam, just like he did in the heat. But now he's powering home. Up the travel ladder, he's stumbling. He's messing it up. Oh, he's down. The family telling Paul, watch out for Shane, because here he comes. They're running in parallel. Who's got it? Shane's down. Paul through. Oh, boy, what an eliminator. 102, a great time. His mum is really happy. Here's Kim. Paul and Shane, what a race. That's got to be the most exciting eliminator we've ever had. The crowd was going wild. Shane, you came from behind. Now, Paul actually slipped there for a minute on the travelator, but he got back up and made it through. How was it? Oh, mate, it's, it's unreal. Coming from behind is really tough, but I like the better that way. Yeah, I thought you might somehow. I thought you'd say that. Paul, did you hear him coming? He was yelling. Now, you almost fell off that balance beam there, didn't you? Yeah, it's giving me a worry every time. I've never seen anybody uh, go up that cargo net so quickly. What sort of training have you done for it? None. None. He's just a fine athlete. Ladies and gentlemen, through to our final, Paul, in a time of one minute and two seconds. Well, to Sandra and Shane, thank you for a fantastic semi-final and goodbye. And congratulations to Catherine and Stubbsy. You still reckon you're too old for this, Paul? <laughs> I guess we'll find out in the final. We sure will. These guys will get another crack at the Eliminator. We look forward to seeing you on Gladiators next week. Good night. Bye-bye. The best package, $25, can buy you. Here's the address to join. It gets more gripping each week because these are the champion challengers, and they know that this is their last chance to get into the final. And the competition is bringing out the very best in every one of them. Join us next Saturday for the second semi-final of Gladiators.